Hello, hello, all my YouTube people. Um, today, I'm just going to do a little bit of work on my shovel head. I think I need to advance my timing just a little bit. Uh, um, and I'm also going to change my intermediate jet and bump it up just one step because I feel like the bike's running just a little leaner than it should. Um, I'm not going to show any videos of me changing my jet because, you know, it's just whatever, changing a jet. But I did want to show you guys my how I put my bike up on a block. Just a little trick that I have. If in case you don't have a bike lift, like I just picked up a bike lift yesterday or a couple days ago um, to get my back wheel off the ground. I just use a four by four block. I've got a couple little pieces of one by four here too that I use. And then I've got this wedge. <clears throat> This is actually wood. This is actually like a wood splitting wedge that I use. So I'll show you guys how I do this. Um, and all you really need is one other person around to help you put the blocks underneath your frame. Like honestly, my 11 year old nephews helped me with this before. Um, so yeah, it's just a simple way of getting your back wheel off the ground if you don't have access to a lift. Um, at the moment or whatever right so i just wanted to show you guys that so i'll get this all set up my dad's here to help me with this today but you guys probably won't see him you might see his feet and hands <laughs> and uh yeah don't worry you know probably get to meet him at one point or another but not today so Because I've got my breather filter that hangs pretty low on my frame on the other side. I just got to make sure that I look out for that. That the blocks aren't sitting right underneath of that filter. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty good. So yeah, I'll show you guys how I do this. Roll the bike up on to the wedge till you're at the highest, highest point, which is about there. And then that gives you just enough room to get your block under. Now this is the little more of a tricky part. So you gotta lean the bike a little bit. This is how it is on my bike anyway. Lean the bike a little bit to the left to get that one block under. Make sure I'm actually far enough on the main block. Right, so let's lean it to the left to get that block under and now we're just gonna lean it over the other way. Yep, we good. And, okay, so after you have um, your blocks under the bike, now you can take the wedge out. You can just roll your back wheel and be able, you can push the wedge out the back. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you guys how high this actually gets the bike off the ground. So now you can see the bike's actually off the ground like a half of an inch, just about, and that's gonna be perfect for doing my timing. Okay, so I've got this little aluminum block that actually came on the engine when I bought it. And um, it was made by some dude, I guess, who knew the guy who had the engine put together originally. So, <clears throat> Um, this is for my external oil drain lines, right? So these are coming in there, but this is the, the plug now for my timing for the inspection hole on my crankcase for my timing. So that comes out and, uh, it's just such a small hole. Like, I don't even know if we're, we're using a light would even be practical. 
but I can see in there and you know what like I know everybody has their own opinions and everybody does everything everyone on the with one of these bikes like ever no one there's no one way about it because every everyone I've talked to has their own way of doing things and I know a lot of guys who don't have never used a light to time their bikes so that's good enough for me my dad's always static timed I know a lot of old guys who've only ever static timed their shovel heads so I can see in there now I can see all the timing marks on the flywheel so I've got to get it to top dead center on a compression stroke but right now I had timed it with the mark with the top dead center mark in the center of the hole but from researching and talking to different people who are more familiar with these engines than i with the dual plug heads and being a stroker shovel head you want to time it slightly retarded so i'm going to time it now with the with the with the mark rather than being in the center of the hole i'm going to time it with the mark just a little bit to the back of the hole but because my timing, my inspection hole on this block is so much smaller than the inspection hole and what it would be in the crankcase, you can see it's like a third of the size of this hole in the block than it is here on the case. So I'm going to time it with the mark just when it just goes out of view of this this sight hole that I have because once it's has just gone out of view of this hole it should now be just at the back of what the normal inspection hole would be so I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to I got a flashlight here so I'm just gonna find it's the TF mark on my it's an SNS flywheel so I called SNS to make sure of this and it is the TF mark. So I'm making sure that line, it's a T line and an F and that's top dead center for the front piston. And that's where I wanna time it. So right now, I see nothing. Okay, so now I've got my um, timing mark in the inspection hole. I have it just at the back of the inspection hole so that my timing will be just a little bit more advanced than it was before. I'm going to loosen off my screws here that are holding my ignition in. And then you want to, the instructions say, I'm sure most of you guys know this already, but some of you might not. So you want to loosen off the plate and now you're gonna turn your ignition in a clockwise direction just so that this indicator light, the static timing indicator light, the red light here, just turns off. So I'm just gonna loosen these. You don't wanna completely undo them, but just enough that you're gonna be able to move your ignition back and forth. Which that should be good. Probably. Maybe not. There, that's a little better. I just, I can just hear it. Okay, so now you saw that flash. Now I'm going to turn it in a clockwise direction or counterclockwise to see. So I think I'm on an exhaust stroke right now because that light should have come on by now. Yeah. I'm on an exhaust stroke, so I'm going to have to rotate a full rotation with the engine to get it on the top dead center on a compression stroke because if it was on a compression stroke, that light would have come on immediately when I turned it counterclockwise. So Okay, so just did a full rotation and I should be at top dead center on the compression stroke now, so this light should should be on when I flip this switch on, there you go. So now turning it clockwise again, just until that light comes off. And you just wanna do this, like, well, I just do this very gently because I want my timing to be as exact. And I'm gonna go back a little bit again.
just I want to be able to lock that down when I'm still holding it. Okay, that's done. There we go, right there. Turn my ignition off to save my battery. Let's do these up again. And that should be good. Don't want to strip those holes out either, right? Like everything's aluminum. That should be good. Just one more little. Here we go. That's done. Super easy. Now I'll just put my plug back in on the other side. Just putting my plug back in this inspection hole. And I use this um this Loctite pipe sealant. Man, guys, I think my dad's had this same tube of pipe sealant since I was like it's probably as old as me. <laughs> like definitely since the 90s. Um so I'm just gonna put a little bit on there just to keep this from leaking since I don't have an O-ring on there, nothing. You don't wanna put lots of this on either. Like, just a little bit more. And I always push it down into the threads actually so that I don't have like big globs of it coming out. And that should be enough, just like that. Move that off. The only thing with this block on here with these external drain lines is it threads into the case, which I'm gonna have to redo that O-ring next time all this is apart. Um, but I just gotta make sure that doesn't turn while I'm tightening up this plug. Doesn't need to be super tight either. Wipe that off. Yeah, like I don't, I know people are gonna have their opinions about that. Uh, oh, you should time it with a light and all this and that. But you know what, if there's so many people that have been doing it this way for so long with never having an issue, then I'm pretty sure that I'm just fine doing it this way and I don't freaking end up having a bunch of oil everywhere and all in my face and all that stuff, right? So I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, anyway, I hope that this video was, if not helpful, at least a little bit entertaining for anybody. And if anyone else has any other kind of tips for like what might be making my bike pop a little bit on the um when I decelerate then give me your thoughts on that and um I will talk to you all later and I'll catch you on the flip side and again if you guys like what you see or if you just like me or even if you don't like me but you like my bike then comment subscribe to my channel turn on that little notification bell if you want to know every time i put out a new video and if you don't mind please share this video or if not this video one of my other videos or you know a couple of them whatever however you feel and uh yeah i'll talk to you all later peace